I'm Mazgen. And I'm Daniel, and welcome to Art Talks for Beginners. If you're wondering whether a painting is by Veronese or Verrocchio, then you're in the right place. Welcome. Welcome. In this episode, we will review a painting uh, that looks pretty simple, but it is very important for art history. Okay. Do you want to go through that? Yeah, sure. Um, there are pillars on the left and right, I see, uh, for sort of framing. There's a gentleman on the far left. Is he carving something? He's doing something with the water, I'm not sure. Then there's a group of people, mm -hmm. and men, of course, a group of men in the middle who are talking, I think, about him. Maybe they're gossiping. Because they are pointing at him. They're pointing at him, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. And then over on the right, there, in front of a building, there is a conversation going on between uh -huh. two gents, one of whom has a cane or something. Mm -hmm. A stick. Yeah. Other thing I noticed is that they have uh, either hats or halos. Halos, on. yeah. yes. <laughs> Uh, so I'm wondering whether this may be 12 important people. Yes, <laughs> good, good guess. Just like That's quite a lot, I didn't count. Take a better look at the central part of the painting and tell me your guess. Oh, is this Jesus? Who could those be? Yes, it's Jesus, Jesus in the middle, middle and around him mm -hmm. are... The, the apostles. Apostles. Okay. And so it's this... a religious story. Let's walk through the painting together, Daniel, mm -hmm. shall okay. we? Yeah. I believe the best way to start this painting is the centerpiece. Mm -hmm. You have already identified Jesus in the middle yeah. with some pinky red, pinkish reddish uh, tunic mm -hmm. and blue toga on him. Yeah. Around him are the apostles. When you look at the figures, what are they pointing at? Yeah, they're all pointing over on the left. So yes. this, uh, it looks like water or something. There's somebody maybe, I can't tell what he's doing. He's actually opening the mouth of a fish there. Uh -huh. It's a bit hard to, hard to see, I believe. Yeah, I can't tell that. But okay, if you say so. Yeah, he's and, and he's getting something from the mouth of the fish. He put his hand in mm -hmm. and he's getting something from the mouth of the fish. That is okay. the main story. This doesn't ring any bells. No, <laughs> You're, it's gonna. Okay. And let's look at the right hand side of the painting now. Mm -hmm. So there's one, one more apostle, I guess, one of the 12. So, you see a 13th apostle. Uh, How many apostles you counted? Oh, you, I didn't you count, counted I didn't count. One over there by the water, then there's uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, not including Jesus. Whatever was I, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen? Yeah, you count fourteen people, right? Around the Jesus. Yeah. yeah, thirteen people you count around Jesus, actually. Excluding Jesus, it should be thirteen people. Uh, but you, won, you counted the one with the fish, so it became fourteen. And if you count and this the guy, guy, he doesn't have a halo. Ah, good one. That's yeah. why I wanted you to count. <laughs> so you would notice that <laughs> there is somebody extra yeah. and somebody doesn't have a halo. Right. What does this tell you? Look at that guy who doesn't have a halo. This one? Yes. He's wearing, he's got his legs exposed, which is very different to everybody Different else. than the others. So yeah. that tells you that he's probably not an apostle yeah. because he doesn't fit in the number of 12. Plus, he doesn't have a halo, so he is not a sacred figure. Mm. On top, his clothes are different. He mm. has a shorter tunic mm -hmm. that also shows his different status, different background from the apostles. So is he a he's messenger a different figure. Or we don't know. We okay. will learn. And check the right of the painting again now. Yeah, on the right, there's one halo and one non halo, also yeah. in the same kind of clothing. Yeah, exactly. So and two. yes, these two people, the one in this red tunic, is actually repeated on the right as well. That's the same person? It's the same guy without uh -huh. the halo. Okay. On the left, he doesn't have a stick in hand. On the right, he has. Uh -huh. How yeah. about the guy with the halo next to him? So, so Because the he's also disturbing your... Yeah, the one in blue, blue-yellow clothing. And he makes the count wrong, right? Yes, he makes the count wrong as well. So it's, He repeats that guy. Yes, okay, exactly. He okay. repeats the guy just next to Jesus. This one? Yes. Mm who is also pointing to the left side of the painting. So this, this guy those, is also repeated. It's a storyboard painting. Yes, it is a composite story. Yeah. Uh, so this painting is telling you different phases of the story mm -hmm. in one single painting. Okay. And when you look at the left, you will also see that guy who's taking something from the fish's mouth is actually the same okay. guy with the blue tunic and the yellow toga. Mm -hmm. So the same guy is repeated twice, uh, three, three times. times yeah. And the, the guy in red clothing, mm -hmm. clothes, is twice. also repeated twice. Yeah. So that's why the story has three sections. Okay. And when we look at the main section, we see that the figures are actually pointing at the next section. 
That's why when you look at the center, mm -hmm. you should go to the left of the painting and start reading from the left. Read the center, then read the left, because okay. they're pointing at the second section, and the third section is on the right. So it's kind of like they're telling us to start, <laughs> start here. <laughs> start here, the yeah. First scene in this story is the middle one. Yes. Then the scene on the left with the fish is like episode Second two. One, yes, episode and then, two. And then on the far right, that's the final. Yes, the, one, the okay. finale. Right, <laughs> the finale, yeah. So let's get to this story now. Hmm. We start in the middle. This story is a story taken from the Gospel of Matthew. When Jesus and his apostles were on the way to Jerusalem, they stopped at Capernaum, another city. Mm -hmm. And when they travel in the city, there is a law, a Jewish law, which says that any travelers, any non-Jewish people getting in the territory should pay a tribute money, a tax, right. a certain type of tax. So a tax collector comes to uh, Peter, actually, the, the apostle of Jesus to Peter, mm -hmm. and ask the money from him. Okay. This is the original story, but in this painting, the tax collector directly faces Jesus, confronts Jesus, and asks the tax money this from is the, Jesus. This is the, tax. the tax collector is the one with the shorter, shorter clothing, mm -hmm. or shorter tunic. And Jesus, actually, in the original uh, Bible story, he says that they are not foreigners, so they shouldn't pay the tax, but in order not to offend, uh, the people, they should still pay, but they don't have the money. Jesus okay. is poor, uh, not news to anybody, <laughs> I can say. Yeah. <laughs> and so he tells Peter to go to the lake and catch the first fish he can catch mm -hmm. and take the money from its mouth. Okay. So that's why in the, in the center, central part, we see the text collector coming to Jesus and the apostles facing them and asking for the money. And Jesus is pointing at the lake on the left-hand side. Okay. The same thing Peter is doing as well. He's also pointing at the lake, confirming that do you want me to go to the lake. <laughs> okay. And on the second part, episode two, we see Peter uh, by, the, by the lake kneeling. He caught a fish mm -hmm. and he's opening its mouth and getting the money. As you may guess, on the third episode, the, the finale, Peter goes back to the text collector mm -hmm. and he's paying the tribute money. Right. Let's look at the painting again, Daniel, and mm -hmm. try to see what we have in the painting that connects with the story again. Now do a second reading. Okay. First, the central figures. Yeah. When you look at them, how are they dressed, for example? They're all dressed very similarly to each other. They're yes. wearing yeah, the tunic and the toga. They are clothed in a very uniform way with a tunic and a toga. And which the halo. Is, and the halo, <laughs> yes. Which is the typical clothes of which period? The biblical Tunic, period? Tunic and uh, toga. Classical Roman. Classical, mm. classical Greek Roman. Mm -hmm. So this is not actually how they're supposed to look maybe as, as from the old Jewish times. Especially from one region they, they paint, they're painted more like this from Italy. So mm. that gives us a clue that that's probably an Italian painter. Uh -huh. And it's an early painting. That's why they don't know so much about archaeology, so mm. much they don't know much about how people look like. What well, Jesus look, might look actually have worn. Yeah. Okay. So that they, the, that's why they're guessing they're just connecting it more with Roman clothing because at the time the Roman Empire was ruling on, on Jewish land. So mm -hmm. they, possibly they wore those, they thought. Mm -hmm. And true. also, uh, because the painter is Italian, he has taken many of the poses from Greek and Roman sculptures. When you look at the figures, you see how they're pointing out, especially on the text collector, how he stands mm -hmm. on a contrapposto pose. That's what okay. we call it. Contrapposto is when you put on one leg. Yes, mm -hmm. all your weight on one leg. So one leg is slightly bent, mm -hmm. uh, the other one is straight and holds all your weight. So your body is slightly tilted to one side. So this is a contrapposto pose, very typical classical Greek and Roman sculpture pose. How about the perspective of the architecture? The perspective as disappearing towards a vanishing point, mm -hmm. so that's linear. Yes, it's that. linear, <laughs> yes, exactly. This is linear perspective, not truly in the sense that we expect to have, but mm -hmm. it's pretty good. Right. Actually, when you converge the lines, where do you think is the focal point? Oh, let's guess. Is it Jesus? Yes, of course. <laughs> That was if an easy you, one. If you die, yeah, easy one too. <laughs> right. You don't 
feel that so much on the left side, but right mm -hmm. side is clearly leading you mm -hmm. to Jesus. This is what we call linear perspective. One of the very famous Italian architects, mm -hmm. Brunelleschi, has formed this in a mathematical form. He had made he made ex experiments and created what we call truly the linear perspective today. Mm -hmm. The painter is called Masaccio. Now I have to review. Uh, he has used these ideas he gathered from the medieval period and mm -hmm. he has seen advancement in this topic at the time. So he just brought things together uh, to create this perspective. This is actually a, an early Renaissance painting. Okay. If it has been a high Renaissance painting, beginning of 15, uh, 1500s, mm. beginning of 16th century, mm -hmm. then we would see that this problem of perspective has already been solved and it looks perfect. Okay. In addition to linear perspective, what Masaccio used as a different technique to create depth is aerial perspective or mm -hmm. atmospheric perspective. I don't know what that is. So in order to create depth, what he does is to paint everything in the back at, with paler colors. Mm -hmm. So when you look at the mountains, as you go deeper in the painting towards the left hand side more, you see that the mountains get paler and paler, paler shades of gray. Mm -hmm. The sky gets that as well. The lake is a little bit paler. And even the left figure of Peter is painted in a more blurry fashion than the figures in the center, who we see very clearly painted. Mm -hmm. So by doing this, Masaccio tries to create a sense of depth and an illusion of depth for us. What he also does, compared to medieval art, that comes before Renaissance, he does something different by adding emotions to people and making them look different than each other. Mm -hmm. When we look at a medieval painting, we always see the same figures repeated a couple of times. They don't have different looks. They same don't face. have emotions. Same face, mm -hmm. very robotic expressions. So you don't get to see much emotions in medieval. On the contrary, on this one, we see that all the apostles have very personal characteristics. They look different than each other. Mm -hmm. Different beards, different hairstyles, different clothes, and colors. even mm -hmm. different colors, different expressions even. Mm -hmm. When you look at Jesus, he looks calmer, but uh, Peter looks more questioning. He's more in doubt. His, his face expression shows this. That is what we see in Renaissance, and it starts from these times with, with Masaccio. On top of this, uh, what Masaccio does is he uses a single source of light in the painting. Okay. At first glance, maybe you won't see it, <laughs> but look at the shadows of the figures. Another and you see them, way. yes, yeah. they're starting from right mm. and they're extending to the left. Mm -hmm. So we understand that the light source in the painting is actually on the right and the shadows are cast to the left. By doing this, also Masaccio creates this effect what we call chiaroscuro. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about chiaroscuro, you might instantly think about... You read my mind, yeah, Caravaggio. Caravaggio. <laughs> and think that, oh, what, what if... Uh, is I it, don't isn't see it, it yeah, Caravaggio yeah, exactly. that yeah. created this chiaroscuro, no. He, did it, he only made it more dramatic. Right. But chiaroscuro effect is, is the effect of shadow and lighting used together to create a sense of depth. Mm -hmm. It starts at these times, okay. but more subtle, of course. Yeah. Compared. When I think of chiaroscuro, I think of that really dark and then really light. This sort of very extreme differences. Yes. But here, it's just more about that. Uh, yeah, the shadow, like you talked about. Yeah, but this is what Caravaggio did. He mm. took it to the extreme because mm. we don't see so much light and shadow effects in medieval either. Mm -hmm. So compared to a medieval painting, this one uses a single light source in a, in a much dramatic way. Yeah. And that's why this this uh, painting is so important for art, then, I guess, yes. because it's using all of these elements. Yes. Maybe not for the first time, but in a good way together. Yes, exactly. This is one of the most important paintings of early Quattrocento. Quattrocento is 1400s okay. in Italian. Mm -hmm. So Masaccio is actually a bridge between the late medieval, early Renaissance painter Giotto mm -hmm. and the high Renaissance painter Michelangelo. Mm -hmm. how, how high Renaissance develops is actually using these ideas, what Masaccio uses, and take them to, to the a level, level up, mm -hmm. the next so, level, yes. You mentioned this is painted by Masaccio, which yes. is, he's Italian. 
Yes. So my guess is this is somewhere in Italy. Yes. The painting is in Florence today, the original mm -hmm. location. Okay. It's in a church called Santa Maria da Carmine, one of the important churches of Florence today. Okay. And Looks like quite a long painting as well. And if it's, it's a big one. It's it a, a fresco. Uh -huh. It's a fresco on the wall. Okay. Uh, so it's painted on wet plaster and the plaster dries and the painting remains on the wall. Mm -hmm. And it is painted in one of the chapels of the church called the Brancacci Chapel. Okay. And the person ordered the painting is called Brancacci. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's so, why it's in the Brancacci Chapel. Uh -huh. So it's for his, his own chapel or it was called that? After... It's his chapel. Oh, okay. It's his chapel right. in the church. So he paid for the chapel. So mm -hmm. he also pays for the decoration of the chapel. That's right. what they do in the Renaissance time. Mm -hmm. This and painting... how big is it? Uh, it's... Two by six. So it's a very big meters. painting. Yes. Wow. Two meters by six meters. It's a very That's big huge. painting. Yes. Okay. And this one is painted in 1425. Pretty early yeah. Renaissance still yeah. in terms of timing. Thinking about Leonardo and Michelangelo, all these high Renaissance paintings. Yeah. Painters are producing their big masterpieces early 1500. So there's still a lot of time between those. That's all for today on Masaccio's painting, The Tribute Money. Thank you very much for watching us. Stick around for more fishing tips. And stay tuned for Art Talks for Beginners. Thank you. Goodbye.